I worked this week's tutorial around a lipstick that I was sent. It's a nice dark aubergine colour and as the winter months are coming in it seemed right to do a nice intense dark look. So I'm starting off by prepping the skin. I'm using Illamasqua's Matte Veil and then I'm doing a small amount of highlighting and contouring. I'm using the Dermacolor Camouflage Palette for this and I'm using D17 which is a few shades darker than my natural skin tone and I'm taking this through the hollows of the cheeks, down the side of my nose and around the hairline. I'm wiping the excess off the brush and then applying it to the skin so it's not going to be as intense. If you want more of a dramatic, noticeable highlight and contour then just apply it straight from the brush straight to your face. I'm using the colour D1 to highlight, this is a few shades lighter than my skin tone. If you want a more dramatic one you can go for D0 which is practically white. Now I don't really suffer with blues or purples underneath my eyes but this is so I can show you guys. Here I'm applying D4 which is a peachy shade, this is going to colour correct any dark circles under your eyes and then you apply concealer over the top. And then we're just going back in with that D1 in a nice big V shape underneath the eyes and this is really going to brighten up that whole entire area. For the foundation I'm using Avon's Ideal Flawless Foundation and this shade is in Nude which is slightly lighter than the skin tone I am but for this look with dark lips and stuff it does suit if you've got a slightly paler skin tone than I've got. Usually I work the contour and highlight in and I only use a tiny amount of foundation but this time I really want to work the colours in so they're not as visible. I want the purpose of the product just to add some definition to the face and I only want it to be subtle as opposed to being obviously highlighted and contoured because this look is more about the blush. Now I'm going to set all that in place using a big fluffy brush and some translucent powder and this one again as it always is is by MS. For brows they're going to be quite intense and very straight and just with a slight dip at the tail of the brow. I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Duo Powder in Ebony two of the darkest shades that they actually have on offer. I'm working in a straight line up to the arch of the brow and then I'm dipping slightly at the tail and then I'm using medium brown to fill in the very front of the brow so it's naturally a little bit lighter so it creates a slight ombre effect but ever so subtly. As it's quite an intense eye makeup and lip I'm keeping the eyebrows quite square but then I'm just going to soften them ever so slightly with the spoolie at the front but they are quite a blocky shaped brow. To neutralise and prep the eyelid I'm using Soft Ochre Paint Pot by MAC and I'm working that in with a brush. To add quite an opaque highlight to the brow bone I'm using D0 from the Dermacolor palette and then I'm just blending that out. To take away any tackiness from where we've applied that concealer we're going to apply vanilla over the entire lid right up to the brow bone and this is by MAC and it's a matte eyeshadow. Next I'm taking this sandy colour matte eyeshadow by Cryolan and I'm taking that right through the socket line. I'm working that from the inner corner all the way to the outer edge and I'm just winging it out slightly. To add a little bit more warmth I'm taking the first shade mixed with a tiny bit of this red Coastal Scents eyeshadow and I'm running that over the top of the eyeshadow we just applied and then blending that with a fluffy blending brush. The reason we don't go straight in with the red is because it can be a little bit too intense. The next colour is Cranberry by MAC and this is a frost finished eyeshadow so we're applying this just to the mobile eyelid. We're applying it on the inner corner and the outer third. And we're patting it in a slight V shape on the outer edge and then blending that through with the blending brush. I'm taking this purple eyeshadow and I'm applying this just into the outer V shape so we're not touching the cranberry on the eyelid but we are just working it in circular motions into that outer V just to intensify this area. This look is all about building colour so we're going to be applying colours, blending them out and reapplying. Here I'm just blending up to that brow bone so it's nice and seamless. I'm taking this reflective creamy pink shade and I'm applying this just on the very centre of the mobile eyelid. To blend that in we're going back in with the cranberry in the same places as before and this is just going to help blend the seams between the two colours. This part I didn't realise that my camera hadn't been filming, what I've done is I've gone in with a little bit more of that purple on the outer edge just to intensify the colour again and now I'm just using the fluffy blending brush just to go around and soften it all. Underneath the lower lashes we're going in with an angle brush using the sandy colour and the red mixed together as we did on the top lid. And then using a pencil brush we're going to run that underneath those lashes and just soften that eyeshadow. Over that we're going in with a little bit of the purple eyeshadow and this is really going to intensify it underneath those lower lashes. Then we're just putting that colour onto the mobile eyelid at the very outer V and this is just going to frame the eyes. And then don't forget to blend just so there's no harsh lines. Now it's time for eyeliner, I'm using this cream liner by Cryolan and this is in aubergine and I'm applying this to the waterline and I'm also going to be tight lining which is to go underneath the top lash line. It's a good idea when this dries to go over it twice as it will add a little bit more intensity. 
I'm taking that liner across the top lid and I'm only going about two thirds of the way across and I'm winging it out ever so slightly on the outer corner. Then I'm also placing that underneath the lower lashes two thirds of the way across and then smudging that out with a pencil brush. After applying some mascara I'm applying these false lashes by Eldora and this set is number M102. When applying lashes I wiggle them into place so that they attach to the root and not to the skin and then I just manipulate them while they're drying. Then under my lower lashes I'm applying this set by a house of lashes called Precious. While they dry I like to use my tweezers just to lift them off my face so they dry in the correct shape. To add a little bit extra definition to my cheekbones I'm using this Cover Effects Matte Bronzer and I'm just working this through the hollows of the cheeks and I'm using a Zoeva face brush for this. Now it's time for lips. To begin with I started off by using this Cryolum face liner in a red shade. Ideally I wanted to use MAC Night Moth but to be honest I couldn't be bothered to get up and find it so I started off with this but once I'd lined my lips I realised I really did need Night Moth so I went and found it. When doing a dark lip ideally take your time because you need to have a steady hand to draw nice symmetrical lines and you want to colour right into the inner corners of your mouth because if you're wearing a dark lipstick it's going to be noticeable if you've missed any areas. So I'm colouring the entire lip in with this Night Moth colour and it's going to be a great base for the lipstick that I'm going to be using next. The one I'm using is by Me 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 Cosmetics and this colour is Morello Silk and it's a lip cream. So if you're looking for intensity you definitely need to apply a lip pencil on first or if you want more opacity go for a lipstick as opposed to a lip cream. The blusher I'm using is called Lake by Cryolin and it's a pinky based one. I would have gone for something a bit more deeper but I couldn't find the right one. And to finish off I'm adding a highlight to the Cupid's Bow and this one is by The Balm. And that is this week's tutorial complete. If you've liked it please give me a thumbs up, please comment as usual as I always comment back and thank you for watching.